Hello and welcome to part 17 of my Hogwarts mock series. Last time we had a look at the few amendments that I've made to the Grand Staircase Tower, and today we're going to be looking at something a little bit more substantial, and that is finishing off the rock work around the main part of the castle. So yes, this is the last section of rock work that needed doing for the main bits of the castle that I've built so far. Started off with the rock work under the Great Hall and under the courtyard, and then moved on to under the uh, Grand Staircase Tower and the quad building at the back. And finally, we have finished the rock work on the viaduct entrance building, which means that if I take a step back the castle is looking a lot more complete than it did before. If I sneakily look round the back, there are still a couple of stacks of uh, multicoloured bricks, one of which has fallen over. That's just holding up this sort of adapter piece on the back of the building. Um, I just need to work out how I'm going to continue that on to the rest of the castle. But for today, we're going to have a look at what I've done with the uh, rockwork underneath the viaduct entrance building. So let me uh, take the viaduct entrance building itself off in a similar way to how I've done with the rest of the buildings and I'll pop this on the building desk and we'll take a closer look. So we're now down on the building desk and you can see the rock work um, without all the rest of the parts of the castle. So um, putting this together is actually a slightly complicated process. I designed it once quite a while ago um, and then adapted it so that I could do the same concept as I've started with the rest of the castle, i.e. making the buildings detachable from the rockwork, and that was all good. But then on having a closer look at it, I decided that it really just wasn't going to measure up. Um, one reason was the interior it actually didn't leave enough room for me to put in a tan wall on the back here. I'll show you what I've actually got there at the moment. Um, that made that needed uh, moving all of the big ugly rock pieces forward by one stud so that there was actually room inside there. And at that point, I thought I'd rather just redesign the whole thing. So back to the drawing board um, in studio, redesigned it. And thankfully, I have come up with something that I am really, really happy with. So um, there are actually four big, ugly rock pieces here. There are two of the straight ones, one on here and one round the side. And then two of the corner ones, which I think are actually, uh, at least according to Bricklink, known as medium, ugly rock pieces forming this bit here. So looking at it from the top, we have the main uh, tower on this side, just there, the main one on this side over here, and then the two smaller ones, one rests on here and one here. Um, one change that I did make was to uh, this area here was originally connected to the rest of the building. But because of these curved parts underneath, I decided it was actually more sensible to change it and put it onto here. Now, the big thing with this is that this is going to be where my challenges for the Philosopher's Stone are. So if you go back to my uh, update video where I showed how I changed Firenze's classroom to include the area with the trapdoor, that is just above here. So I will turn this around and I will show you um, where I'm going to be putting those challenges. So looking at the back now, you might be thinking that it looks very unfinished. And the reason for that is um, that it is basically. Um, as I was saying before, I needed to move all the big ugly rock pieces forwards so that there was room for an interior wall. At the moment, I haven't built that interior wall and it's just been replaced by these multicolored bricks. That's just to keep it all structural so that the viaduct entrance building can actually sit on top. But my plan is, once I get the summer wave of sets and I've reviewed them, I'm going to use pieces from those in order to complete the wall and the details. So what that'll leave me with is the room with Fluffy in it, just here. And then the trapdoor will open and send you down to the Devil's Snare, just here. And then you'll come through to the room with the flying keys just here. I haven't yet decided if I'm going to use the space underneath here um, because it is hollow back through there and I might be able to use it. So that's up in the air at the moment. If not, I can just use a straight wall across there. And once you pass through the flying keys, you will get to the chessboard. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get the chessboard uh, set straight away, so I may just do my own mock-up here, and then if I get it later, I might be able to include a few pieces. Obviously not going to get a full chessboard in there. Now, the final bit, um, if we're at least just going according to the films, is the Mirror of Erised. Now, uh, this presented a bit of a challenge, because the Mirror of Erised, which originally came in the 
great hall set, which you can see just here, um, is quite tall. And obviously, seeing it right here, it's too tall for this level here. So um, without some substantial changes, which would ruin the appearance, I wasn't going to actually be able to get it underneath the viaduct entrance building itself. So it took me a while, and this was one of the reasons why I had to rebuild this and redesign it. Uh, but I've come up with a solution I'm pretty happy with, and that is that it is on hinges. So it actually swings back like that, so you can see it properly. So that is just the stock uh, mirror of Eris head that came in that set, which I think is absolutely brilliantly built. And I managed to create this sort of enclosure for it, um, which is, I think, <laughs> I'm quite happy with the shaping, how it all works out. Um, but what it means is that I can have it closed and you can sort of look down the length of the uh, corridor, or you could if my phone wasn't too big to get in. Oh, how about that? Let's look down there. So you can actually see it at the end and maybe have minifigures just there. But if you do want to open it for display, you can swing it out like that and then put the figures in front of it instead. And I think this was the best compromise I could come up with, which keeps everything looking nice um, as well as uh, functioning properly. So there's just a big panel on there with some stickers that actually came from the Room of Requirements set. I was looking for somewhere to use it. Now, when the viaduct entrance building is actually on top, this uh, level here is almost at exactly the same level as the wall of the little walkway outside. I'll pop it back on in a second and show you. Um, so it does look slightly strange, but you can't actually see the mirror of Eriset at all, um, which is perfect and exactly what I wanted. So that is basically what I have done so far for this. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting those summer sets so I can create some more interior details. Um, and then working on the challenges. Now, what I said before about being uh, the Mirror of Erised being the final challenge according to the films, obviously it's still the final challenge in the books, but um, I did think about one point that I might be able to include the challenges that they left out. Now, um, there were five challenges, Fluffy, Devil Snare, Winged Keys, Chess, Mirror of Erised, God, that's hard to say fast. Mirror, mirror, mirror of Erised. Um, but there are actually two more in the books, and those are Snape's Potion Challenge, which I think comes just before the Mirror of Erised, and also a troll, which was put there by Quirrell, which luckily the gang don't have to fight because it's already knocked out. Um, I thought I might be able to include those, and I still might try and put in Snape's Potion Challenge, although it will be very hidden. Um, so we're just going to go with the film versions for now, which, you know what, my whole castle is a compromise between the films and the books, so I'm not too worried about that. And there we are with the viaduct entrance building back on. You can see what I was talking about in terms of the uh, bit holding the mirror of Erised. It matches up actually perfectly with this slope just here. So from the outside, you can just uh, see it as some sort of buttress or feature. This little walkway isn't even a real part on the castle. I just uh, built it so I wouldn't have to tunnel through that turret just there. And then obviously it can open out to the side and it looks really good. Um, you can just see it through the stone bridge from the front, but when you close it, it's basically invisible. Um, the only other thing to show is just the positioning of the trapdoor, which is just here, and lets you down into the Devil's Snare below. So that is the viaduct entrance building rock work, which uh, I'm really happy to finally get completed. And it means that the castle as a whole is looking really good and really complete from the front. Obviously, this is uh, still only the beginning, and there is a lot more of the castle to build. Now, um, I mentioned in the previous video that I'd be changing my setup, and in fact, uh, might have been able to see when it was up there, I have indeed changed my setup, and that is going to enable me to add more of the castle and actually have some more space, which I didn't have before. So next time, I'm going to take a look at that setup and just show you how I organise my pieces, how I display things, and... Uh, just detail some of my plans for the future. So thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give it a like down below and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these videos. Um, obviously, it's great to see your comments all the time, and I uh, really look forward to hearing what you guys think about this. So uh, have a great time, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks.